Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, continuing our look at the Southeast Asia Pack DLC for Planet Zoo. Today's animal of choice is the Binturong. Many of you asked me to check this animal out, and at the time I was like, I do not recognize this animal. I later on in this episode realized that I know the animal by a different name, but going into the episode I was like, you know what, it's just another opportunity to learn something new. Uh, another opportunity to explore a new animal. So uh, very excited to dive in and again create a new space and, uh, and and learn about a new animal. Of course, after the time lapse, we'll be taking a look at the animal's kind of description, the fun facts and all that kind of stuff in the Zoopedia entry. And then we will actually see them in action. We'll bring them into the zoo and check them out. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, again, let me know down below by leaving a like. It really helps to make decisions on the channel with regards to what kind of stuff to do, what not to do, what you're interested in. Uh, and again, if you're interested in a particular animal sooner rather than later, let me know in the comments down below as well. Again, I will be covering all of the animals from the DLC as well as some additional kind of interesting stuff that I think y'all will enjoy. Uh, but if you have a specific order you'd like to see them in or something you're particularly interested in, let me know and I'll take it into consideration like I did with the Binturong. Again, I saw quite a few comments. Uh, hoping to see this animal next, and that is what influenced my decision. Uh, I had something else in mind, and I might do that one next if I don't get enough kind of uh, indication from the comments. But uh, but very very excited to dive in today with the uh, with the Bintu run. I want to mention as well as we do kind of build this space up that if you are interested in picking the DLC up for yourself, if you choose to do it at the link that is in the description down below and in the pinned comment down below, then you will actually be supporting the channel as you pick the DLC up. I saw a couple of you did use that link already from the last session, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Again, there's never an obligation, but it is greatly appreciated. Uh, and again, if you haven't seen that previous video, if this is the first one you're watching, it has been uploaded. It was uploaded just two days ago from this one's release, I suppose. And uh, you can check it out on the channel for uh, for some more kind of exploration and, and discovery and I, I guess learning. We learned a lot about a culture that I was unfamiliar with as well as an animal I was unfamiliar with. Anyway, over here right now, what we're trying to do is build sort of an like a like a, a bit of an island vibe i want to say the region that we're dealing with has a lot of islands and i want to try and get that archipelago feel going without actually building an archipelago now it's not an island obviously it's attached to the rest of the zoo but i felt like building this large sort of water space uh, helps kind of reinforce that feeling uh, in a in a in a non-literal sense, in a bit more of a metaphorical sense. If it was just an island, then it's just an island. It doesn't really, you know, whatever. It's an island. But this is trying to build island spaces. So our previous enclosure that we built in the last session, we had like a moat over here. We have this. I guess this is also it's a half moat, I suppose. Uh, but trying to get that vibe in, I suppose, uh, rather than a a, a literal. Uh, implementation of islands uh, and it's actually a type of enclosure that I haven't done too much of I don't think I've really explored this kind of a layout overall so I was excited to do this as well uh, from that perspective from a sort of exploratory perspective uh, now something I do discover sort of after the time lapse is that the uh, Binturong can have a walkthrough enclosure so if you wanted guests to be able to walk through the enclosure and sort of get a bit closer to the animal then you can do that but I am glad that I've opted to go this way here instead because it creates a it creates a specific kind of experience that I was hoping for there would have been opportunities to make this a walkthrough instead but you know what we'll explore that down the line in our franchise mode let's play you know if and when we add the uh, Binturong there but uh, but yeah for now we are not doing a walkthrough enclosure even though you do have the opportunity to do so now what are we actually building is maybe something I should touch on I am now again, those of you who are familiar with the channel and familiar with the uh, the um, franchise mode Let's Plays that we've played, uh, you will already know that I am a big, big fan of the aesthetic of Southeast Asian temples. Uh, South and Southeast Asian temples, I should say, because it is kind of there are some architectural similarities which we'll be relying on uh, in terms of the pieces in game. Uh, and so I thought, you know, I want to kind of, I had a, I had, <laughs> I had a very specific visual in mind, in fact, uh, from Indonesia, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that I wanted to kind of try and recreate over here and kind of create a bit of a, a, a monumental spot, a monumental area. Now, I actually got a comment or a handful of comments from the previous session and also during our, uh, the uh, Let's Plays that we're doing with the, the franchise mode Let's Play, uh, that it'd be nice to sort of uh, every once in a while have a more sort of pure natural space for the animal rather than one that has human interference in it. 
I totally appreciate that feedback, and I will be taking it into consideration with some of the upcoming animals we'll be adding. Because today, I am sort of implementing that feedback as well. I know that sounds a little strange, but based on my reading and my like visual research, uh, the Binturong can be seen in, I don't know if I should call it like a, an urban space or like semi-urban spaces, but there there seems to be, there, there were enough, uh, there was enough imagery of the Binturong in spaces that clearly had human influence that I felt like integrating that uh, would build uh, the, the natural habitat is you, you know what I mean it's kind of like a it, I don't want to say it's a commentary but it's uh it, it touches on the, uh, uh, the the relationship there I guess which I thought was interesting and yes I'm gonna be honest it's a bit of an excuse for me to explore this architectural style again again I, I do quite love it if you've never seen a uh, South Asian or Southeast Asian temple uh, and you are you know if you're a fan of um, architecture, particularly uh, uh, hyper complex architecture, uh, you know, <laughs> let's 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 call it maximalist architecture, if you will. Then uh, then it is uh, it's a sight to behold. Um, so using some of the India pieces actually, and then recoloring it to try and fit the vibes and the, the typical kind of color expectations uh, of these temples could have had some more brown tones and stuff as well. But I went with the the, the gray stones here, and it actually made me realize that I would have really liked to see. Uh, more uh, construction pieces uh, come out of this DLC. I imagine I'm not the only one. I don't know how many of you in the comments agree with me, but uh, getting new pieces to build with for me has always been uh, another fun extra thing to explore. Don't get me wrong. Of, of course, I love getting the new animals and you know, seeing how they interact and seeing how they work and play and all that kind of stuff is, is always good fun. And uh, I'm really excited that we have so many new animals with this DLC. But uh, even when I was doing some of these Southeast Asian animals in uh, like from the base game, I felt the same way. That was like I was kind of trying to make do with some of the India pieces, which again historically and culturally does make sense. The Greater India region had a lot of influence from the Indian subcontinent, uh, and we see it to date, even up until now, from a cultural perspective, from an architectural perspective. So okay, that all makes sense, sure. But I found myself using India pieces and. Um, uh, pieces from the, the South America DLC, which I'm doing now as well to build a Southeast Asian uh, area. And that's fine, because again, it works, but it did make me realize that I would have liked to have received another, you know, 10, 20, 30 uh, pieces that were uh, styled uh, specific to Southeast Asia, you know, uh, statues, um, sculptures, that kind of thing. Because like I was saying, these, these, these structures are extremely detailed, there's a lot going on, but I just didn't have uh, all the parts to play with, so to speak, uh, to make something uh, so extremely intricate. I also wanted to avoid repeating the same stuff that I did at my Elite Zoo North franchise mode uh, zoo, because for me, it's an opportunity to explore something a little different. Now, some of the pieces I'm using are, of course, there's a bit of overlap, but in terms of the decorative aspect of it, I didn't want to do the exact same thing all over again, because what's the you know, fun in that? I mean, it, it can be fun, but... Uh, it doesn't really allow me to explore something new like I wanted to do over here. Uh, the challenge over here right now, I'm pretty pleased with my how, how quickly I was able to, to actually do this. Uh, but the challenge over here was to then make this symmetrical. I really wish, I hope, I mean, it's probably, you know, it, it probably takes a lot to, to build something like this. But a great quality of life change uh, for future Planet games. Or maybe as an update to Planet Zoo, I wouldn't complain. Um, but a great quality of life change would be a mirror button um again i i've done i like i do a lot of like 3d stuff i've done a lot in in in, in my past and whatnot and, and and symmetry is so often used um that when i played my first kind of planet game when i first got got, got into planet zoo i was so impressed at like the, the little, like gizmo you get and how you can manipulate everything in almost every way you know minus scale uh, but then I was uh, thrown off by like how you can't do like a quick mirror flip. And to this day, I still feel like it would be awesome if you could just click a button and it would mirror it uh, along an axis, depending on, you know, what uh, what you needed. Uh, because here I'm trying to like, you know, have to piecemeal go in there and pull individual pieces over. Uh, again, just a bit of feedback. I mean, the, the building system they have in this game is absolutely mind blowing. I absolutely love it. Uh, but when you love something, that's when you uh, give feedback, right? That's when you that's when you want it to do better. 
Uh, on which note, folks, again, let me know what you think about these spaces and let me know what you think about these enclosures and stuff as well. Uh, I, I'd love to hear your feedback, both in terms of like execution, and style and concept and all that kind of stuff. And it's also cool to just hear people's uh, thoughts and opinions uh, on my execution. Uh, if you have positive feedback, if you have criticism, whatever it might be, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. I do love reading through it. I do read through all the comments as well. Those of you who are unfamiliar with the channel, just... Uh, Something you should know. I do read through all of the comments. I wasn't able to respond to all of the comments of the uh, previous episode like I normally do. Uh, it's been a bit of a hectic uh, end of the month over here. It's been a hectic year, I'll be honest. Um, but uh, but I did read through all the comments. And again, like I said, it's what influenced on my decision making today. Uh, and it'll continue to influence my decision making down the line as well. I have a couple of questions I will ask after the time lapse with regards to what we do next. Um, the uh, the Binturong actually, not only can it be a walkthrough enclosure, but you can also uh have it share space with other animals and i was kind of thinking i'll just do individual enclosures but maybe uh maybe we want to change that up uh, and again I, I turn to you for your opinion on that front uh, over here just again mirroring that's the thing is like mirroring took so long over here uh which i don't necessarily mind but it could be something that is accomplished with a click of a button and uh and obviously you still need to tweak tweak and adjust because this space is not perfectly symmetrical, and I'm fine with that. In fact, I prefer it not to be perfectly symmetrical. Um, maybe because I'm strange like that, I suppose. But the uh, it would be nice to at least have that mirror button so you could flip it around, and then you could make your tweaks and adjustments as necessary, as opposed to having to find a way to like make the mirroring happen. Uh, but yeah, pretty pleased with the level of detail we got in here. Again, I would love to have some more intricate elements, some more intricate like trim and whatnot. Again, if you look up some examples... Uh, you, you can see some pretty, uh, some pretty wild, uh, level of detail on, on, on some of these structures. Again, these are temples that are, you know, they're, they're extremely old structures that I'm referencing. And, uh, it's, uh, from an era where it's just like, <laughs> it feels kind of like, Hey, yeah, the more, uh, the more, uh, the more hard work you put into one of these, uh, the more you get out of it is the kind of vibe you get looking at some of these temples that it's, it's really awesome. It really is, uh, awe inspiring. I'll use that term lightly at all. Uh, so I'm just hoping to at least capture, you know, a, an iota of that, uh, uh, of that, of that grandeur, if you will. It's something that's always fascinated me. Uh, but yeah, this is actually, um, you might recognize this. It's obviously, I'm not making a one-to-one -one build over here. We don't have the parts for that, but you might recognize the overall motif and structure of it. Um, as far as the, the temple is concerned, I was quite happy with getting the, uh, the, the entry for our staff. Uh, right down the middle over there that actually worked out quite nicely and now i'm going to add some vegetation around the area as well i wanted it to look like beyond uh this structure there's a densely forested area i want to add some more vegetation in the water and stuff as well um i do quite like how the vegetation can really fill up a space and it the the way the colors work together with like the tamarind trees and whatnot it, it just it, it brings a space to life uh, and I knew I would be relying on them a little bit because of how much gray stone and stuff we were using. I actually toy around with the color of the water as well, both during the time lapse and after the time lapse. Uh, I really love that they've given us that option because, as I comment later on as well, um, there are some really beautiful options. I don't know if they're accurate uh, to like the space we're building right now, but they they do look really nice and they really change the vibe of the space. A very cool, very cool addition. I'm very pleased with that one. I, again, they keep adding these like things that are completely unexpected to me, at least. And it's just like, oh, hey, wow, didn't know I wanted this, and now here we are, and I can't imagine not having it, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, we will toy around with the water in a bit after I put down some more uh, bamboo and stuff like that. I wasn't 100% sure if these guys could swim or not, but I also wanted to have a bit more kind of dense vegetation in the area. Um, and of course, in the middle, we have a bit of a play space, climbing space, because they are climbers. Um, so I wanted to make sure they were able to climb, and I wanted to cover that. Uh, base as well just to you know make sure we weren't grasping at straws afterwards trying to build them a climbing space without any uh, any room for it without any well space for it uh but yeah the uh the the area is mostly done just adding a couple more details to get them climbing into more interesting and intricate spaces i've got that glass wall over there to prevent any jumpers from escaping if that's the uh, case uh, but overall, I believe this is more or less it. We're going to clean up the terrain over here. But that is, yeah, the, the gist of the time lapse. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know. If you didn't, give me some feedback. I'm always all ears. I'm always open to other folks' opinions and, and thoughts and feelings. And as I move forward with the rest of this mini series, I'll be taking all that into consideration as well. Again, let me know which animal you would like to see next, potentially. Let me know, uh, well, lots of questions need answering. Feel free to answer them if you would like to have your voice implemented. But for now, I'm going to head on back as I try to find a beautiful angle over here.
to regular speed. All right, folks, that is it for the time lapse. And once again, I find myself face to face with an animal that I've never heard of. <laughs> I like this DLC a lot. It's actually teaching me quite a bit. Like I'm, 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 I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with animals. Like I, you know, I know, I, I know my animals, yeah, a decent bit. You know, I would say. Uh, but this DLC is, yeah, full of surprises. This was probably the most requested, I think, in the comments of the previous episode. And I hope I mentioned this during the time lapse as well. But, you know, keep those requests coming. If you have a different animal you'd like to see next time or what have you, then let me know. And I'll take that into consideration moving forward, obviously. Again, there's a lot of animals in this DLC. So, uh, you know, slowly but surely, we're going to be covering them all, giving them all little spaces. And, uh, you know, discussing them and seeing them in action as well. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the Binturong is... Uh, unfamiliar to me and a uh, few of you asked for it and I thought why not I'm not familiar with this it is absolutely adorable so let's uh let's dive on in and create a nice space and and check it out uh so here we are checking it out the binturong also known as the arctictus binturong is vulnerable with this population in the wild unknown the binturong also known as the bear cat oh things make a lot more sense now <laughs> The Binturong, also known as the bear cat, is a species of mammal that lives in the forests of South and Southeast Asia. It has a long, stocky body with comparatively short, broad legs. They have wiry black hair with a brown face and white-tipped rounded ears. Females are approximately 20% larger than the males. The Binturong has a head body length of 28.4 inches to 36.4 inches and a tail length of 22.4 inches to 36.4 inches. The males weigh between 19.8 and 44 pounds, and the females weigh between 24.2 and 70.4 pounds. That is a huge, like, variance. That's, yeah, that's quite massive. Um, I imagine, uh, I imagine if we see that level of variety kind of in-game as well, like if we get some real lightweights and some real heavyweights and whatnot, I guess, uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, the Binturong is threatened by habitat loss, degradation, and fragmentation through deforestation. Its population has declined by 30% since the 1980s. Wow. It is also hunted for meat in Laos and Vietnam, and is often a victim of the wildlife trade in the Philippines. The Binturong is a protected species in Bangladesh, Thailand, Malaysia, and Vietnam. It is a pretty widespread animal compared to our uh, prior adventure. If you missed, by the way, the previous episode of this mini-series exploring the Southeast Asian animals, uh, you can check it out. I'll have it linked in the description down below. It'll be right next to the link to the store where you can buy this DLC and support the channel as well. Again, some of you have picked it up from that uh, from that link, and I appreciate the support greatly. If you buy it there, you get a Steam key, and it does help the channel out. But anyway, I'm I'm getting distracted here. Uh, all right, this is pretty interesting. I can't. I just feel like the I can't be the only one who feels this way. That like the the the, the, the descriptions are different. Like they're written by somebody else. You know, or like they're written under a different like writing direction or something. They feel very different from the uh, from 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 like the base game and from prior DLC as well. Moving on, though, their natural habitat, as I was saying, is a lot more widespread than uh, than our previous animal. I mean, <laughs> significantly so. But uh, yeah, the Vinturong is 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 pretty widespread, but it is also in you know Indonesia and stuff as well. So I I figured a little bit of proximity to our um, uh, Babirusa area over here would be a nice kind of tie in they don't need a lot of space at all they're relatively small animals they do need some climbing sort of equipment and space though so hopefully what we built for them is enough 40 meters square is not that much but it is sometimes hard to tell exactly how that will play out and i'm also a little concerned that they're going to find sneaky little escape routes here and there and uh <laughs> cause a ruckus let's put it that way don't need to swim they don't need deep water that's all good again climate wise we might need to put some heaters down or something because well, actually, I'm in sandbox mode, so I can just flip it to the warmer times of year and stuff, no problem. Uh, again, this is a sandbox zoo. It is set in North America, but uh, we can, uh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine on that front. As far as species data is concerned, group size excluding juveniles, two to five, up to five males, up to five females. Okay. Uh, male bachelor group size is two to five. Females is the same, two to five. Dominance, there is none. Mating system is monogamous. Relation with humans is shy, and guests can enter the habitat. So you could do a walkthrough enclosure if you so chose with this one. Uh, I decided not to do that. I wanted to create this kind of uh, special space. I mean, I guess I could have, I could have made it a bit of a walkthrough where you could kind of like walk in between these uh, these structures and whatnot. But 
I don't know, just didn't feel like it. I, I wanted to do one of these kinds of things. <laughs> haven't, haven't done one of these kinds of things in a while, if not ever. And so I thought I'd do like a little like kind of dual uh, viewpoint kind of a thing instead of a, a walkthrough. Just switching it up. We might do a walkthrough instead for our uh, franchise mode Let's Play so we can switch it up as well between here and, and there. But uh, beyond that size, as we discussed previously, there's a huge variance, but the average seems to be 26.8 inches for males, 33.2 inches for females. Life expectancy is 22 years across the board, and weight is 15 kilograms for males and 21 kilograms for females. Okay, I, I can't help but not comment. Like, I'm oh, sorry, I mean, I can't help but comment. It's like, it's pounds for the Babarusa. I remember distinctly because I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with, I don't do pounds. I do kilograms. I'm a lot more comfortable with kilograms. So I remember distinctly being like, seems, he seems heavy, I guess, ish. I don't know <laughs> for, for the size of the animal. I don't know. But I look at this and it's like, okay, I, I know what I'm looking at here. Uh, and I realized I was like, hang on, I was like, these are, these are kilograms and these are pounds. Why? <laughs> Why do you do this to the game? The inches stay inches though. It's not like they switch to like centimeters or something. I just don't understand. Don't understand. All right. <laughs> so, uh, age of sexual maturity is at 1.5 years. Sexual sterility is at 15 years. Number of offspring for mating event is 1 to 3. Okay, manageable. Gestation and incubation is 3 months. Interbirth is 12 months. And reproduction captivity is difficult. Okay, fair enough. So we might actually... This was actually brought up in the comments of the previous episode. A very good point. That the animal we save for last should maybe be the one that has some of the easiest reproduction in captivity. And that way, we'd be able to see a baby that same episode, almost guaranteed. Because here, with the Binturong, we might not uh, see a baby today. But because, you know, we're going to continue this series and show all the other animals, eventually, hopefully, inevitably, we're going to be seeing some Binturong babies as well. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to see one today for sure, but there is a chance because reproduction is difficult. Uh, and, and that way, we kinda, we have, we've like built ourselves a bit of a buffer because I can imagine these adults look cute. I imagine their babies are adorable. So, you know, that gives us that uh, opportunity. Social needs. The Binturong is a solitary animal but is not territorial and individuals will tolerate each other in the same space. That sounds familiar. If two Binturongs meet, they are likely to avoid each other unless it is a male and female and the female is an estrus. That word. They may also be found in groups of a female and her litter or a mated pair and their litter. Larger same-sex groups have been kept together successfully in captivity. Oh, interesting. Um, oh, now I wonder where these numbers sit. I remember there was something similar with the hyenas, actually. Though maybe the other way around, where hyenas... Uh, well, what was it exactly? I, if, I, if I recall correctly, you could have extremely large groups. But in... Uh, yeah, you could, you could have as many as 90 spotted hyenas in a sort of sing singular uh, community... But in captivity, um, you could only keep them as, yeah, pairs and, and, and trios anymore, and it causes a lot of issues. So uh, it's almost like that, except the opposite. I, I find these kinds of connections interesting. Again, if you're familiar with the channel, if you're familiar with my playthrough, you'll know the kind of stuff that kind of makes me go, oh, hey, this is interesting. This is similar. This is different. I wonder why. Uh, just uh, just the way I approach things, I guess. Um but yeah, sorry, as I was saying, so uh, also we found that uh, kept together successfully in captivity. All right, reproduction, quite a bit over here. The reproductive habits of binturongs in the wild are little known, but they are thought to be monogamous. When the female is an estrus, she will make calls and emit a scent that attracts males. In response, males in range will mark excessively with urine and track the female. During courtship, a male and female will become very affectionate with each other. They will lick each other, touch each other, and sleep with their tails entwined. Okay, that's actually adorable. The male may be aggressive towards other approaching males. During copulation, the male and female will purr at each other. Binturongs mate throughout the year, but females are more likely to give birth between January and March. They're able to delay egg implantation until conditions are favorable, which explains why there are peak peaks in birthing at certain times of year. That's really cool. That's really cool. Huh. Might look up the like the, the mechanism of how that like how that works. That's very interesting. Um, young are born in an underdeveloped state and spend their first few days hidden in their mother's fur. They begin eating solid food at six weeks old and are fully weaned by eight weeks old. Males may or may not assist in rearing young. Kits or cubs, the young can be referred to as both, are independent and leave their parents and litter at six to eight months old. Binturong males reach sexual maturity at 28 months old and females at 30 months old. So around the same time, more or less. Interesting. Very, uh... A lot of, it's a, a lot of detail about, like, how they're 
mating and, and, and like the performative aspect of that is uh, described over here. I quite like that. It's interesting. I guess it, yeah, I think I guess that's why because it's kind of different, not what you'd be uh, not what you'd expect, I suppose. As far as research is concerned, we have of course everything unlocked. It is the uh, it is sandbox mode, but it does look like there are no new enrichment items for these guys. Yeah, seems like these are all the same old as before. This is something I've brought up before. I would like to see each animal have at least one unique enrichment item. I feel like that would make each animal a bit more interesting and a bit more unique, for lack of a better word. Uh, but moving on from that, the fun facts over here. Number one, the genus of the Binturong is Ar Ar Arctictus. Arctictus? Arctic Arctictus, I imagine. Which means bear weasel. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> okay. I, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Again, I like these kinds of fun facts. Uh, fun fact number two, the Binturong is an excellent climber, but is slow moving, so does not leap from branch to branch, instead preferring to move between trees on the ground. Okay, that makes, actually, makes me quite happy, actually, because I was a little worried about the chances of them uh, making a leap of faith from, like, you know, these trees over to these uh, these platforms and whatnot, so hopefully we're not going to be seeing any of that happening. Um, fun fact number three, Binturongs are a very vocal species, making purring and chuckling noises when happy and wailing when upset. Cool. I'm, I'm excited to hear some of that in action. Number four, Binturong is, sorry, the Binturong is an important seed disperser for the strangler fig because unlike other animals, its digestive system can break through the tough seed shell. Huh. Now that's a, see, this is the kind of fun fact I like. That's a, that's an interesting little tidbit about the ecosystem and how the Binturong is, is, a key component of said ecosystem. I like that. Uh, the Binturong scent glands secrete a substance that smells like popcorn. Yo, are you serious? <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay. Oh, that's that's so weird. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I I you know I have I have nothing to say. That is, I like these fun facts. That is that is a that is maybe the most fun fact. The most fun fun fact I have read. In all of Zoopedia, it's hilarious. Um, okay, cool. No, oh, hey, there is actually interspecies enrichment as well. The Malayan tapir and the sun bear. Now, this is good to know for us because I assume then the Malayan tapir has quite a bit as well for itself. Oh, but interesting. And I suppose this makes sense that the sun bear and the Malayan tapir don't get along, but the sun bear and the binturong do get along. Hmm, okay. Well, I'm... I'm perfectly happy and in fact I prefer giving each of these guys their individual spaces that way I get to explore a bit more and we get to spend some more time with each of their animal each of the animal spaces sorry but it is interesting to see I don't want to get distracted by the Malayan tapir over here but it is interesting to see its uh its overlaps I mean let me know what y'all think if you would like to see the proboscis proboscis monkey and the uh, Malayan tapir together we could do that as a joint enclosure that's obviously an option as well but uh, that's a conversation for later. Again, I do read all the comments, so leave a comment down below. I will read them all. Uh, I know I didn't go through and reply to each and every one like I usually do for the uh, previous session. But rest assured, they were read and they have been uh, taken into consideration. All right. A chance to read all that. I do wish... <laughs> Hindsight 2020, I guess. I wish I hadn't come so close to the edge, but it's all good. We just, you know, just crop it out like that. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get the uh, the animal in here now, the Binturong. You might have noticed actually during the time lapse a couple of times I had to like look up the animal and i was just like i remember the name starts with a b but i can't remember what it was it's just... but yeah i am i am i'm a lot more familiar with uh, with bear cat as a as a term for it yeah i do wonder if the search no wondering if it had it as like a tag or something all right let's get this done here so over to animal trading bring ourselves to the animal market and get the been too wrong where you at p been too wrong there we go I was like, okay, I know how to spell. I know how the alphabet works. Uh, filter? This filter's, filter's acting up weird. Is that for anybody else as well? It's been acting up weird for me lately. Uh, we got some that we can pick up. Oh, again, the it's not like conservation credits matters because we're in, in sandbox mode here. Looks like by default, the genes are all right. The size genes are on the lower side, but uh, hey, that's fine. Be a little bit cuter. Why are you? You're a little green up over here, aren't you? Not so much over here, but a little bit over here. That's one female, and let's go ahead and get ourselves... I mean, we can get we can get them all, can't we? I believe so. A pet? I do believe quite a few of them are taken as pets. I was uh, looking them up a fair bit, and it's part of the reason why I want to integrate a... I don't, I don't necessarily want to call it urban, but uh, a man-made structure, partly because of that kind of 
I guess, relationship between, that I at least was able to see between humans and the, uh, the Binturong when I was uh, looking up like image references and whatnot, just so I could understand what I was working with here. Um, but uh, there have been some requests that I make some purely natural environments, and I will be doing that moving forward as well with this Southeast Asia DLC showcase. Uh, what I'm looking for here, zoo, animals, over to the Binturong, one, two, three, four of you. Let's go ahead and move you all to quarantine first. Again, you never know if uh, we're going to get like an injured one right off the bat. I, I was surprised to see that happen last session, but hey, it's a thing. Let's go ahead and unpause, get that done, get the animal in here. Now, the reason why I put this glass paneling down actually was because I was worried they would climb up over here and then make a leap and uh, and, and tour, the, tour the rest of the zoo. But if they're not jumpers, then maybe we can actually get rid of the glass paneling because I do think... It works a bit nicer without the glass paneling, uh, but hey, you know what? The, the the battle between form and function, sometimes function, really does have to win, doesn't it? Uh, guests are none too happy, but again, just as a reminder, folks, this is not a real um, zoo per se, in the sense of like, I'm not keeping a track of all that kind of stuff. This is really just a DLC showcase kind of a zoo, so I'm not too, uh, too, fussed, too fussed about any of that stuff. Um, we're playing it on like, you know, super easy mode, it's unlimited money. Not uh, not much to be concerned about. Say goodbye to Wellsy over here, though. Oh man, they. <laughs> I feel this is a recent addition, allowing animals to just like drop dead wherever. It's been uh, particularly. It's been it's been it's been it's been something special with the koalas at Elite Zoo South, especially with our uh, Let's Play, seeing the koalas literally drop from trees. Oh, look at that beauty. I'm still very happy with this uh, with this space as well. I uh, I actually got some really nice feedback in uh, in the comments with regards to it. Um, a lot of people who are sort of familiar with the the culture and the style and the architecture and all that were uh, very pleased with the execution and stuff like that. It always feels good to hear that because I'll be honest, I it's like taking a bit of a risk every once in a while. It's just like I don't know if I'm getting this right or close enough, uh, and I try to be very careful about that kind of stuff. So it is great to hear that. Uh, Folks either did not know anything about these guys and, and learned a fair bit, not just the animal, but the culture and the, and the subgroups that we spoke about, uh, but also the um, uh, that those of you that are familiar with it were like, oh yeah, you know, this is a pretty good uh, approximation and whatnot. Uh, at least you know from what I've uh, what I've what I've been told uh, and based on my research as well. But sometimes hearing it from somebody else is uh, nice. <laughs> so thank you, thank you for the uh, kind words. Um, quarantine pass where I leave. Is that just two of you? Oh, why don't we go ahead and start getting them in right off the bat over here. No need to wait, though. It'll probably be done soon as well. Go ahead and get you in here. I do quite like that the, the door is back there as well. I was kind of wondering initially to, like, kind of tuck it to the side and keep this clear. Then I was like, wait, this actually works out quite nicely. Sometimes things uh, things work out as you need them to. Didn't think it would take too long for the rest of them to be ready to go as well. Move all of y'all in. And wait for your arrival. Now I want to mention as well, in case you didn't see the previous uh, video, I mentioned it then, but I'll mention it now as well. I've got some really fun videos planned with this uh, update that we just got. Uh, there are some really exciting things that I'm exploring right now with uh, some of the new features that are coming through with this update, or that have come through with this update, and, uh, and I've got some plans. So if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, you might want to consider doing that. Uh, I do a lot of Planet Zoo stuff, I do a lot of management games and strategy games uh, particularly, uh, but uh, if, you're, if you're interested in some Planet Zoo... Um, let's call it trickery. <laughs> I've got some like sort of tips and tricks and ideas and thoughts that I'm going to be sharing in the near future about some interesting stuff. Stuff that I find interesting, at least as far as uh, the visual aspect of things. I don't want to give don't want to give too much away, but uh, but I'm working on something, writing some scripts and whatnot. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, folks are interested. And if you are, you know what to do. Subscribe. Let me know. Oh, moonwalking, uh... This, this would have been a fun fact to mention as well. I... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. Where are you going, buddy? This is actually quite nice to see, though. They're very active climbers, it looks like. Oh, no, you're, you're gonna jump, aren't you? Hey, hey, what happened to not going across trees? Go back down. No, no, no. What are you doing? You're gonna escape, and I'm just gonna let it happen, aren't I? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. I see what you're trying. Look at this. Look at those hopeful eyes. It's like, no, nobody, no, you're not gonna... Okay, so my, my concern has uh, has come to fruition, it seems. Also, these guys are super cute. They are adorable. 
Are these the little teeth sticking out, or what is that? Anyway, um, their ability to fly and stuff besides. Let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. Not enough hard shelter, okay. We do have enough climbing, that's good. Enough land for sure. Hard shelter we can expand a little bit. I suppose we could, uh, I could maybe expand the pathing here or something, make this, or, or, or put a platform down over here and make this hard shelter. That was my other thought as well. Um... We're okay, not not ideal, so we might want to change that up. And it looks like the, the terrain actually is fine by them. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of long grass myself, so I'm actually going to go ahead and paint that out uh, and just make it short grass over here. Uh, don't worry, I haven't forgotten that we're dealing with escapes, but, you know, just a minor sidestep over here before it slips my mind. Uh, I want to mention as well, by the way, Torn, again, with like, I'm really pleased with these, uh, with the whole water thing that they've done. They've got us now able to uh, choose templates for water and they've got us now able to um, kind of like customize colors and stuff as well if we want to get kind of funky I guess I wonder if oh hey hello do some really really fun stuff with this I think you do some really fun stuff with this but um, I don't want to lose my template colors I'm, I'm kind of torn like I like I don't know if it's accurate to the space is the thing to like the uh, the ecosystem but I do quite like the coloration of the Everglade uh, water. The Amazon water as well, though. Again, I don't know if it's accurate. It's 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 beautiful, I want to say. It is beautiful. Uh, but I think we'll stick with clean water for now. We could actually adjust the transparency a bit. Kind of see it. See see the ground. See the work we put down over here and stuff and whatnot. Uh, natural colors. This is something I'm not sure. Like, what does it change exactly? Does it change how, like, the atmospheric... Like, is that all it changes? How 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 the lighting works under the water? That's what it feels like, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, sorry. Uh, let's deal with this escape over here. Let's, uh, let's, uh, I can select any one of you. Now let's sort this out. Let's make sure that we find all the escape routes. Oh dear, okay. You can climb up over here, you're fine. How else can you get up over here? I'm assuming just by the tree. The reason why the marker's out there, by the way, is because the, um, the, the, the barrier goes out to there. Let's go ahead and get rid of these trees then. You probably saw me in the time lapse. I, I, I toyed around with that just to see if that would, um, how that would look and thought it looked fine. Hopefully this is, okay, good. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I'm fine with reducing one of the trees. That's, uh, that's fine by me. And they are able to now climb up over here and we're going to keep the, uh, the glass then because they might make a, they might make that jump. I don't know, actually. Let me, let me see. Because the tree they were able to just walk out. Over here, yeah, looks like they won't jump, but they will walk between trees among the branches if they can go from branch to branch, uh, and then they will walk right out of your enclosure if uh, if uh, if the opportunity, I guess, presents itself. <laughs> that was pretty cute. He's just like walking over, and I'm just like, you're about to escape, aren't you? Oh, you guys are adorable, though. A little tough to hear over the ear there. Look at those tails as well. I've been told there's a unique animation, so I'm trying to keep an eye out for it. Um, don't want to say what it is yet. I'm hoping it actually happens. I need to keep an eye out on, uh, on the trees, I guess. I don't know if they'll do it off of some of these climbing pieces, hopefully. But I will keep an eye out for it. Overall, they seem, seem pretty pleased with the space. Like I said, I could, uh, add some more hard shelter over here. I don't want to, I don't want to mess with this too much, but that might be the way to go about doing it. I was hoping that, uh, this would give enough hard shelter. I could maybe pull it back a bit more. But it does concern me, like, if they're going to be able to um, escape here. I don't know how much of a difference it'll make to pull this back a touch. But we're about to find out. I also have to adjust the um, barrier here. I don't think that'll make enough of a difference, I'll be honest. But it's worth a shot. Worth shot. Nah, that's not going to make enough of a difference. I can, like, tell it's not going to make barely any difference. Okay, I stand corrected. Listen, you know, I, uh, it's important to be able to admit when you were wrong, and I was wrong. <laughs> that, I guess, did, uh, did solve the problem. However, it looks like we don't have enough climbing anymore with that, those two trees taken out. Not enough climbing anymore, so why don't we go ahead and get another one of these thin ones. It looks like they can use the thin ones, at least that's what the, uh, habitat, um, like, map is telling us. We should be fine here. And this should allow for some interesting moments as they kind of climb across. Maybe they'll 
Maybe they'll use this for that animation I was talking about. Man, they are real cute though, aren't they? Such is my good fortune. Looks like the um, the wolf animation or the dingo animation looks very similar to that. <laughs> okay, fine. Just like wasn't sure if you wanted to get up or not. I guess no is the answer to that question. They are they are quite adorable. They're they're such uh, their their dimensions are the dimensions of cuteness. I wonder what they eat, actually. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I wish the, um, Zoopedia included a bit more of. They're, I assume, predators based on the positioning of their eyes. Right? Like, those are forward- yeah, they're, they're almost certainly predators. Those are forward-facing eyes. Um, but what, uh, what could- what could something of this size possibly eat? Like, what is it? Are you hunting mice and stuff? Or bugs? I mean, again, this is stuff that I can look up, and I do intend to look up. I like learning about, I just like learning about things, right? But, what do you eat, naturally? I guess we'll, f you know what? This... Sure, are, these are answers, but meat is a very generic answer. I just want to be clear that I'm very well aware that the Zoopedia does have this section. I just realized as I was, as I was talking about, I wonder what they eat. I realize it has this section, but meat is a very generic kind of thing to say. I, I wanted, I, when I say, like, I wish I knew, I would like to know more, right? Like, lions also eat meat, but I'm pretty sure the bear cub isn't out there, uh, hunt- bear cub? Bear cat. The bear cat isn't out there hunting, you know, zebras and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine? Don't, don't, these guys are kind of just, like, laying around here, not doing, uh, kind of hanging out. Not doing too much. Could give them some more enrichment items, I suppose. Have I forgotten? Yeah, we'll give them some toys. I always uh, forget one or the other, it seems. Uh, enrichment, some toys. The bin too wrong. Let's get you some wind chimes. I do quite like the wind chimes. And it, it fits the vibe, you know, it fits the vibe quite a bit, I think. Oh, uh, where would I put it down? Hmm, put a pair down. I can have like one over here. And one over here. It would fit. I think we've got our bedding over there, which is getting in the way. The bedding back. I feel like the, the the wind chimes are the right vibe for this kind of a space, you know? Depending on the tone of the chimes, I guess. But you know what I'm going for. You know what I'm going for. That rotation is not the same as this rotation. The crowds are liking it, so that's good. I really want to make more spaces like this. I do quite like the... Uh, I, I quite like how, how this looks, and how this experience comes across, I guess. Another thing that I'm I probably mentioned during the time lapse, but just to reiterate, is like I quite... I'm, I'm hoping to build a bit of an island feel for each one of these. So, for example, you know, this has its little moat, if you will. This one's got its little like, water. Obviously, these aren't actual islands, they're not literal islands, but trying to bring that vibe across, I guess. Ah, oh, yeah, these guys are... Still not too happy about the enrichment, eh? Because the... What? Is is this is this an inaccurate... Uh... No, the Binturong is supposed to make them happy. Are you not able to reach these? Or... Within their area? Not registering them? Okay, that's weird. Maybe let's get them... More toys as well. Because again, if they're not happy, they're not going to... Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> it's neat that that's uh, buoyant, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't help me. That's still gonna drop. All right, let's put you down here. Because again, if they're if they're not happy, then they're not gonna they're less likely to mate and stuff like that, right? So that down. That's weird that the wind chimes didn't uh, register. Because it does include been too wrong right here. Weird. All right, not the end of the world. Let's get the rubbing pad as well more. Why, why would you? <laughs> why? <laughs> I'll run away from the crime scene. <laughs> it's kind of obvious who did it, buddy. <laughs> Alright, where can I put this down? Let's get rid of this wind chime then. That's too bad. That felt uh, very fitting. It's down over here. We'll get rid of you as well, because if you're going to be useless, then we might as well get you out of there. 
Hopefully with the uh, rubbing pads and stuff, we'll catch some fun animations. I don't think we have any pregnancies yet. Doesn't seem to be the case, no. I do wonder if we'll get one today. And again, like I said, even if we don't, we are set up so that in the near-ish future, hopefully we'll see some uh, babies come through. What are you up to? There we go. Where you headed, buddy? And pass this, all right. I mean, okay, I, I'm quite pleased with how this, like, look at that. Pretty pleased with this. Pretty happy about, about how this whole thing has come together. Trying to find a nice kind of like angle here. I think this works nicely. I think this works quite nicely indeed. Down you go. All right, all right, fair enough. Just a small little grip on the climbing platforms. I love animals that climb. There's just like so much to like see them do and whatnot. Fun to watch them explore, uh, discover their spaces. You're gonna use this rubbing pad over here. Come on. What are you thinking about? It? This thing's huge. There we go. <laughs> I'm glad we caught that. Always fun to catch these little moments. They seem to be doing alright though. Overall, they're pretty happy. Again, no pregnancies yet. Come on, let me... Okay, nope, there we go. Nothing yet. Soon though, soon. I have faith. I have faith. Again, we're playing on easy mode and stuff, so I imagine that is to, again, enable pregnancies and whatnot a bit more. Are you about to... Yeah, you are. There we go. Seeing it from a different angle now. Yeah. Well, I prefer some of these to, like, the balls and whatnot for, for these showcases, because you can see some different animations. I mean, yeah, they play with the balls and stuff as well, and they throw them around and whatnot, but... Uh, I do like to see how they've animated the rubbing pads and scratch pads and things like that. Alright, well... You seem to be having a good time over here. Guests, again, they seem to be enjoying this as well. On their way over to the, uh... To our... To our earth on the back of an animal. They seem to be enjoying this little stop. You... Yes, you are. Alright, very nice. Is that successful? You wouldn't be able to tell over here. Mm, who was it? Oh, I don't think that was successful. Ah, it's too bad. Again, they, they... Oh, we got another little mating going on over here. No luck. Now, are you actually monogamous, though? Yes. The game has made them monog monogamous, so fair enough. Fortunately... No pregnancies yet. Yeah, I was wondering if it, like, it was just a matter of time before the notification comes up, but it seems those were unsuccessful attempts at mating. Well, like I said, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll have some good fortune in the near future. Perhaps it was not meant to be today, but it'll, it'll happen soon enough. We've got plenty more animals to go through, and as we uh, play around with them and as we bring them into the zoo, I'm sure at least once or twice we'll have a couple of uh, Binturong babies. The little tuft above the ear is, uh, very unique, <laughs> unique element. Reminds me of a, a particular type of penguin. I forget the, uh, the exact type of penguin, but I think some of you all will, will know exactly what I'm getting at. A little yawn, a little lie down. Ah, oh, so good. Very, um, very fidgety, this guy over here. Who is this? Ad Adelia? Adelia? Lie down for a split second, get back up. Oh, here we go, back up. On the topic of getting back up. Here you go. Yeah. That, <laughs> it really does. It looks like a cat, doesn't it? A little bit. When it walks across like this, cat on a fence. Not like, not, vi not like visually like a cat, but in terms of its like movements and whatnot. I'm, I'm well aware this is not a cat. I would not mistake this for a cat if I was walking down the street. One of these walked over to me. Alright, folks. With that last uh, lap over there, I think we'll call it a session.
There's a couple of interesting still, like interesting things to see still about these guys. I'm hoping to come across them over the next couple of episodes. Again, the next one will be tackling a new animal. If you have a preference for which animal I do tackle, let me know. Uh, I would also love to hear your thoughts on making a shared space for our uh, proboscis monkey and the uh, Malayan tapir as well. We're obviously not going to do the Indian elephant. We did that at Litsu North. Uh, it's not a new DLC animal or anything. I don't want to mislead anybody through like the titling and whatnot. So uh, we could create a joint space for the Malayan tapir and the proboscis monkey. Like I said earlier, doing them separately gives me more opportunities to like explore and do different things. But I'm cool either way if folks want to see how the animals like interact with each other or interact, how, how they can like work together in a space. And we can definitely do that instead. But uh, yeah, as always, I turn to you in the comments. This is Rogan Call to Session, though. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoyed looking at another new animal from this Southeast Asia pack. Again, if you want to pick it up for yourself, if you use the link in the description and the pinned comment down below, you will be supporting the channel as you grab the DLC. Again, not an obligation, but it is greatly appreciated, of course. With all that said, as always... A massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting of the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.